Will the Prime Minister appear before the Finance Committee? The Honourable Prime Minister, we have received the invitation, Mr. Speaker. We will consider it, and I'm very happy to be here today to answer questions. I will also be here tomorrow in the House so that the opposition members can ask me all the questions they wish. As I've already said, it was the independent public service that made the recommendation of the WE charity to deliver opportunities to students. I should have recused myself from that discussion. I did not, and I'm sorry. This isn't about just a simple recusal, Mr. Speaker. Here we have an organization that has paid cash to the Prime Minister's family and given him and other senior Liberals a massive political platform. That organization gets in trouble after gobbling up millions millions of dollars worth of prime Toronto real estate and breaking their bank covenant. They then lobby the government for a tailor-made program that they will be able to take an administration fee for managing. The government does them even better, comes up with an even bigger program, gives them a sole source contract, and the Prime Minister would have us all believe that this is a massive coincidence. Will the Prime Minister do the right thing, show up and testify at committee? Mr. Speaker, during this unprecedented pandemic, we put out billions of dollars to support Canadians, young and old, workers, employers and entrepreneurs, to make through this particular challenge uh, that is hitting us all extremely hard. We put forward a $9 billion package uh, for students that included deferral of student loans, that included uh, direct uh, support through jobs, uh, through Canada summer jobs and jobs in, uh, in COVID-affected sectors. We have continued to look for ways to encourage volunteerism. We will continue to stay focused on the things that matter to students and to all Canadians. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. So gross and disgusting that this Prime Minister keeps using the pandemic as an excuse for his corruption. The very first act that this Prime Minister did when the pandemic hit was try to give himself unprecedented power and eliminate the role of the opposition in Parliament. And now we know why, Mr. Speaker, because when they're pushing three hundred billion dollars worth of deficit out the door, they will stop and take the time to reward their friends. That is the essence of this Liberal Party under this Liberal Prime Minister. I don't even have a question, Mr. Speaker. It's just disgusting. Mr. Speaker, one would think that when uh, a, a House of Commons is about to pass legislation worth over $50 billion to help businesses with an extension of the wage subsidy, that there might be a question uh, from the opposition on that or on anything they want to bring forward. Uh, the fact of the matter is we remain focused on giving Canadians the support they need to get through this challenging pandemic. We will look creatively, we will look carefully at different ways of supporting students and elders and we will keep doing that, Mr. Speaker, for all Canadians. The Leader of the Opposition. That's right, Mr. Speaker. Nothing to see here. Just move on. Don't ask any of the tough questions. Tough questions about the relationship with an organization that paid members of his family cash, that took administration fees for running sole source government contracts after breaking their bank co covenants and having members of their board resign. Now, the Prime Minister is trying to hide behind the public service on this one, but I'd like to ask him a very simple question. On what basis would the public service have made their recommendation that we was the only organization that could deliver this program? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, when we came forward with the idea of supporting young people who would want to be involved and serve their community across the country, we as a government came forward and looked uh, to see young people serving their country. The Public Service took a look at the ways they could deliver that program and determined that the WE organization was the only one that could deliver that program uh, as ambitious as it was for this summer. Uh, that was the recommendation made by the nonpartisan Public Service. Uh, of course, as I apologized for I should have recused myself because of the connection with the families, but that doesn't my family, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the public service recommended that organization. The leader of the opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, here's what the charity intelligence watchdog said about that claim. Quote, I'm not sure how you would assess the charity's track record or capability to do this if they had not previously done such work in the past. His explanation just doesn't hold up. But there are two camps developing in the Liberal Party, Mr. Speaker. On the one hand, we have the Foreign Affairs Minister. 
minister who wisely took a barge pole and separated himself from the scandal, saying that it was a mistake and he didn't know anything about it. Then we have the deputy prime minister, who had no problem showing liberal faithful that she was willing to defend her leader. I would ask the deputy prime minister, what would it take for her to lose confidence in the scandal-plagued prime minister? The right honourable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, every step of the way, our government has been looking to support Canadians through this unprecedented pandemic. Yes, uh, we put out tens of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars into the pockets of Canadians, Your workers, pockets. families, entrepreneurs, people working all across the country who were challenged with this pandemic. And we looked for ways to support students as well through uh, summer, summer jobs, through creating new jobs in, in uh, various industries, but also through encouraging volunteerism and service to this country. We will continue to look to ways to support Canadians right across the country through this difficult time. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Am I bothering anyone? Mr. Speaker, a little while ago, we had a distracting exchange with the Prime Minister with regard to the problems of the Liberal Party and the necessity of the party to uh, Im improve the wage subsidy. And yesterday in committee, one Liberal MP said that his party or her party was having problems. That's true. Um, um, not necessarily for financial reasons, but there are problems. And I think it's because the Prime Minister uh, is crushed under the burden of uh, files which have nothing to do with uh, helping Canadians. Um, is there any way the Liberal Party will renounce uh, the wage subsidy program? I'd like to reassure the Honourable Member that the work this government is doing is still focused 100 percent on Canadians, be it the Safe Restart program with $19 billion going to the provinces and territories, which was signed last week, or the $50 billion for the wage subsidy program, which we are going to pass today in this House. This government will remain focused on the work it must do for Canadians every single day, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for belle chambly Mr. Speaker, you cannot uh, buy your way out of a crisis. Buying a lot does not mean purchasing well. The Prime Minister clearly is very preoccupied, perhaps too preoccupied, with other things uh, which have nothing to do with managing this crisis without presuming of the result of all the investigations of the committees should the Prime Minister not temporarily, because clearly he is thinking of other things, step aside for the Deputy Prime Minister to replace him. Mr. Speaker, as I said last week, we signed a historic agreement with the provinces on a safe restart for the economy. And today, we are making available more help for businesses. $50 billion will go to businesses uh, with the wage subsidy program. Despite the opposition focusing on one issue in particular, we are working on the issues Canadians care about, and we will keep on delivering support every day for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister has close connections with the WE Charity, that's obvious. So why does did the Prime Minister not recuse himself when the decision was made to award nearly a billion dollars to the WE Charity? The Right Honourable, the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as government, we are there to help young people, seniors, workers, families throughout this crisis. We wanted to help students by creating service opportunities for them, and the Public Service made a recommendation. They recommended that the WE Charity be chosen to deliver all of these opportunities for young people across the country. We agreed to the recommendation. Indeed, and I apologize, I should have recused myself because of those connections between my family and the charity. But apologizing means nothing if the Prime Minister keeps on breaking the rules to help his wealthy friends. Here are the facts. 
The Prime Minister's family has earned over $300,000 in speaking fees from this organization. This, we have said that they don't actually normally pay speakers a fee. Now, on top of that, giving a billion dollars to create a brand new program makes no sense when there's so many existing ways to help students that are faster and are proven. So will the Prime Minister admit that this was never about helping students and always about helping his wealthy friends? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. S Speaker, it's a shame to see such cynicism from the NDP in regards to supporting students. Uh, we put forward a $9 billion package for students. It included deferral of student loans, creation of new jobs in sectors affected by COVID, uh, enhancing the summer jobs program, and many other things to support students and student organizations. On top of that, uh, we saw an opportunity to encourage service and volunteerism and create opportunities for tens of thousands of young people who want to step up during this pandemic. This is something we believe in deeply and something that this government will continue to work on. Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. Well, what's disgusting about the WE scandal is that the Prime Minister's wife, mother and brother were paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by WE and then knowing this, the Prime Minister doesn't recuse himself from the decision to give WE $912 million. Now, I'm sure the Prime Minister is grateful that the Deputy Prime Minister proclaims she still has confidence in, in him, while other ministers, like the Minister of Global Affairs, is doing everything he can to distance himself from the PM's latest ethical scandal. Will the Minister of Public Services and Procurement tell us which cabinet camp is she in? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, what's clear is that our government is focused on delivering for Canadians. We know that this is a very unprecedented and challenging time. We know that Canadians are struggling. We know that COVID-19 has impacted all Canadians and disproportionately certain communities and students are no exception. When it comes to um, the investigation from the Conflict and Ethics Commissioner, um, we will be working with this office. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. Well, we already know what camp the Minister of Diverse, Diversion, uh, Inclusion, oh, sorry, Diversity, Inclusion <laughs> and uh, Youth is in. Uh, but the Prime Minister's family was on the WE payroll when the decision was made by the Cabinet to award a sole source contract of $912 million. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. Which camp is he in? Is he in the camp of the Deputy Prime Minister's confidence in the Prime Minister, or is he in the camp of the Global Affairs Minister who is distancing himself from the Prime Minister's latest ethical scandal? The Honourable Minister. Speaker, our government's focus is clear. It's on Canadians and delivering for Canadians, and that's what we do on this side of the House. The Conservatives can choose to play their politics of division. That will not be our focus. We are in the midst of a pandemic. We are not out of the woods yet. We need to deliver for Canadians. That's exactly what we'll do. The $9 billion program, the suite of programs we put forward for students, was the right thing to do. And I think it's really great that we're talking about legislation today, debating legislation that's going to help small businesses, that's going to help communities, that's going to help people with disabilities. No matter the delay the Conservatives cause, we will remain focused on Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lobby Lobinière. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The close connection between the Prime Minister and the Weed Charity um, is giving off an odor of hypocrisy. The Prime Minister is under investigation by the Ethics Commissioner for the third time. Several ministers are becoming impatient. So um, does uh, the minister still trust the Prime Minister? Our government will keep on working for Canadians. We will make sure that they have the pro programs and the resources they need. With regard to the investigation, we will work with the Commissioner's office. Thank you. The member for Lévy, La Bitinière. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister seems to be muzzling his own ministers. I would have liked the minister herself to answer. The Deputy PM still seems to be um, confident in the Prime Minister, but not the Foreign Affairs Minister. Um, what about the Transportation Minister? Does he still trust the Prime Minister? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I said, we're in a crisis and we will keep on delivering for Canadians. We're going to make sure they have the programs and resources they need during the pandemic. We are all pulling together and we will make sure that Canadians have what they need. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
floods Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as we've heard, the Prime Minister is being investigated now for a third time, this time for his $43 million bailout for his buddies at the WE organization. So he spent the last five years dividing Canadians, but now we're seeing the divide in his own caucus and in his cabinet. So some cabinet ministers have had enough of the Prime Minister, and, uh, and I want to find out from the Infrastructure Minister, which side of the divide is she on? The Honourable Minister for Diversity, Inclusion and Youth. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it's clear that on this side of the House, our focus is on Canadians ensuring that they have the programs and resources that they need. We know that Canadians are struggling. We know that all Canadians have been impacted by COVID-19, and certain communities have been impacted even greater. And that's why our focus is on ensuring that Canadians have the supports they need, and that's why one of the first things we did was come out with the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. It has helped millions of Canadians in their time of need. Our government will continue to focus on them and ensure that they have the programs and resources to get through this challenging time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Well, member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. Well, we know that the Minister for, for Diversity, Inclusion, and Youth is uh, where she sits on this issue. She was at committee last week and gave a uh, misleading uh, and incomplete answer in response to questions as part of the cover-up into this latest scandal. So as part of the Prime Minister muzzling his cabinet, uh, she's back on her feet today. But we know the Deputy Prime Minister has come out uh, in favour of the Prime Minister. We know that the Foreign Affairs Minister, not so much. So let's find out from the Liberals. Let's see how they've decided which team that they're on. To the Immigration Minister, is he with the Prime Minister's cover-up? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are in an unprecedented time and Canadians are facing challenges and our government is here to respond to them and we will remain focused on them. As a Minister of Youth, I speak with numerous organizations. When I was asked to appear at committee, the first opportunity I was there to ensure that questions were being answered and as I have stated, uh, it was an unsolicited proposal and it was not the CSSG. The opposition member can continue to mislead Canadians. Unfortunately, we should demand better and our government will focus on Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have a point of order coming. There's some... Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's no point of order during question period, but we cannot use foul language. Now, if you're going to call someone else a name, then the Speaker may call you out. I just want to point that out. And there's there's been some banter going back and forth. That's something that's acceptable within what goes on. It shouldn't exist at all. But calling someone a name is not allowed, as we've learned in the past. The Honourable Deputy de Rivière-du-Nord. Honourable Member for Rivière-du-Nord. <laughs> I have a colleague who must be very happy to hear her writing called out all the time. Now, Mr. Speaker, the more we're learning about uh, the WE charity, the more it uh, smells. We're being told that we would have received $19 million to manage a custom-tailored program, but then that amount rose to $43 million. They have no experience in managing volunteers, and we learned today that uh, they are not doing well financially. Charity Intelligence says that they are bad managers, they have no experience managing volunteers. Could it be by coincidence that the only uh, competencies we charity has uh, is have donated to the Liberal Party? Merci, Mr. Le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I said uh, before, our goal is to help Canadians because we realize we're in a pandemic and we face many challenges, as I said at the Finance Committee and elsewhere. We were given a recommendation by the Public Service. I accepted that recommendation and at committee, I shared the details of uh, the contribution, um, we shared that the public service had negotiated the uh, contract with uh, the WE charity. I shared those details as asked on committee. The Honourable Member for Rivière du Nord, the apologies of the Prime Minister just don't cut it anymore. He is responsible and accountable for the decisions of his government. He uh, announced the creation of this program, knowing full well that his family had connections with uh, the charity. He just hoped that nobody would have noticed. Uh, any way you look at it, ethically, this is 
indefensible. So the prime minister has to be responsible and do the only thing left for him to do, which is to step aside and let the deputy prime minister take over while the investigation unfolds. The honorable minister. Mr. Speaker, from the outset, from the start of this pandemic, we said we would be there for Canadians. Regarding students, we announced a certain number of measures. We announced uh, a $9 billion support package for students, including uh, the Canada Student Emergency Benefit, and uh, we also announced bursaries for full-time and part-time students, and we imposed a six-month moratorium on repaying student loans. With regard to the Ethics Commissioner, we will work with his office and make sure he has the answers he needs. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister can find $40 million for his friends and the WE organization who are struggling financially but can't do anything to help Alberta's oil and gas sector. The Finance Minister promised help within hours, but when his friends at WE need the help, he has no problem cutting them a check. It's always the same story with these Liberals. Help them get votes and you get the money. This government is corrupted. When is, where, where, where is the help for the Alberta the oil and gas sector, Mr. Speaker. Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, uh, as we have said on a number of different occasions, we have intervened in the economy to help a number of different sectors. We have been we have been unwavering in our support for all sectors across Canada, including the oil and gas sector, where we have put an unprecedented amount of money, Mr. Speaker, into cleaning up, uh, into cleaning up old and abandoned wells. This will create more jobs and more uh, infrastructure uh, development in that sector and help us move forward, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon Grasswood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, the Liberals refused to tell this House whether the Prime Minister's mother was paid to appear at a WE event on Parliament Hill in 2017. Over a million dollars of taxpayer money was used for this event, and the Liberals owe Canadians the truth. Enough of this corruption. Yes or no? Was Margaret Trudeau paid to appear at the WE event on Parliament Hill July 2nd, 2017. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We Charity was one of several organizations that have submitted a Canada 150 proposal to the Department of Canadian Heritage that was sub subsequently selected. The two Canada 150 contribution agreements between We Charity and the Department of Canadian Heritage were approved by the Minister responsible at the time at the recommendation of Department officials. Cabinet was not involved in the process of approval of these contribution agreements. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Carleton. In addition to the over $300,000 that the Prime Minister's family received for giving speeches, how much did we charity pay his family in terms of uh, personal spending? How much? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I said, our government will continue to ensure that Canadians have everything they need during this pandemic. We know that the uh, Ethics Commissioner is investigating. We're going to be working with his office. The members of the Finance Committee have uh, asked him, uh, uh, asked me to testify, and uh, I did so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Carleton. The was how much the Prime Minister's family has received in personal expenses paid by the WE organization. Uh, we already know they received over $300,000 in so-called speaking fees, but we don't know is what additional personal expenses the organization paid for the family on top of that. So one more time, how much did the WE organization or its affiliates pay in expenses for the Prime Minister and his family? Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as we are in the House of Commons, we discuss and debate government business, and it's important that we remind Canadians, reassure Canadians, that we will be here for them during this unprecedented and challenging time. It sounds like the member opposite has questions for the WE organization. Those are great questions that he should ask the WE organization. We on this side will say focus on Canadians, and if there's any questions in regards to government business, I look forward to responding to them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Hamilton, the Centre. Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, like many Canadians, I would love nothing more than to provide our full attention on the COVID crisis at hand. But while people are worried about having enough money to make it to the end of the month, they see the Prime Minister and his Liberal cabinet focusing on helping themselves and their friends instead of people. There's alleged irregular lobbying, contracting, and pecuniary conflicts of interest related to the Prime Minister and the Liberal cabinet. Taking responsibility means holding accountability. This is the third time the Prime Minister is under an investigation for breaking the rules. What exactly has he learned? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, our focus remains on ensuring that Canadians have the programs and resources that they need. I will remind the member that there are officers of Parliament. They are independent agents that do important work. We have the utmost respect for officers of Parliament to do that important work. We have been clear that we will work with his office to ensure that he has the answers he needs. He also knows that committee members, members of all parties, asked me to appear at the Finance Committee. I was there providing answers. They asked for officials to appear. Officials were also appearing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for London, Fanshawe. Mr. Speaker, there is no economic recovery without childcare. Women and parents can't return to work if it means leaving their kids home alone. The Liberals missed the mark on their agreement with provinces and are treating childcare as a nice-to-have instead of a must-have. Experts, businesses, economists and parents are clear. To go back to work, families need safe, reliable and affordable childcare. Will the Liberals invest the $2.5 billion required this year to finally build a universal and affordable childcare program? Honourable Minister for Families. Monsieur le Président, I want to thank the Honourable Member for the important question. We're continuing with our investments in the amount of $7.5 billion over the next few years to continue to create safe, affordable, quality and accessible childcare. We've created over 40,000 affordable childcare spaces for the most needy families in this country. We are going ahead with our bilateral agreements in the amount of $400 million to provinces and territories. And as part of the Safe Restart Agreement, Mr. Speaker, we are transferring to provinces and territories $625 million for a safe restart of the childcare sector, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Vimy. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Women play a tremendously important role in uh, the Canadian labour market, and yet many women are struggling to go back to work because they must continue to assume responsibility for uh, to care for their children. We understand that without women returning to work, there will be no economic recovery after this pandemic. Mr. Speaker, what is this government doing to uh, foster the availability of uh, child care services that are safe and affordable and that will allow Canadians Canadian women to get back to work. And you have been listening uh, to the House of Commons question period. Uh, lots of questions uh, for the Prime Minister as well as other uh, ministers there regarding uh, the WE uh, charity and a contract that the government had given to uh, we, the WE charity. We heard from Andrew Scheer uh, and uh, the CBC's Janice McGregor has been following all of this and we heard uh, Janice you know, uh, I think I've got this right. I was quickly writing it down, but it's this is what Andrew Shearer had to say. It's so gross and disgusting that the Prime Minister keeps using the pandemic as a cloak for his corruption. I don't even have a question. It's disgusting. I think yeah, that's, I think that's what he said. Yeah, kind of extraordinary moment there. Yeah. Part mm -hmm. of a, a series of questions, yeah. Um, I was watching carefully the Prime Minister's body language as he was kind of dealing mm -hmm. with those accusations. Um, sometimes when he comes to question period, uh, kind of, I would say, you know, with the full suit of armor on. <laughs> and I would say today, I uh, look to be one of those days, clearly anticipating a, a rough go in that first uh, leader's round. I uh, seem to have his answers ready, though, and uh, to be criticizing the opposition for not focusing on, uh, you know, issues that he uh, said were more important, like the legislation they're considering right now, which does things like uh, enhance the federal uh, wage subsidy to help more workers during the pandemic. But um, I was just thinking in terms of question period tactics here, if you'll pardon a little bit of inside baseball, I, I found the conservative kind of lines as they went along there, where they were trying to get the cabinet to sort mm -hmm. of uh, say what side they were on to be quite interesting. This all started with actually block leader Yves-Francois Blanchet uh, coming out a number of days ago now, suggesting that the prime minister had too much to worry about 
saving his own political career, and maybe he should just step aside for a bit, let Christian Freeland run this government in the pandemic response while he was preoccupied with this controversy. Uh, of course, Justin Trudeau has not done that, but that was the suggestion from the bloc leader. We have seen others starting to kind of pile on to that suggestion in the days since and suggesting that cabinet ministers, you know, some of them were trying to barge pull themselves from this controversy, say, look, I knew nothing about it, nothing to do with me. I wasn't part of the team that decided this, disassociating Philippe, instead François of kind Philippe of all Champagne. hanging together. François-Philippe Champagne uh, yeah, being exactly, one, one right. of them. Yeah, and, and, and we have heard that from other ministers, too, saying, look, I, not, I had no part of this, nothing to do with me. I wasn't aware of these conflicts, you know, really trying to kind of I stay out of it while others, of course, Bardish Chagger herself, I'm very much in the thick of this. And she was taking all the questions. Every time the Conservatives tried to get another minister up to talk about this controversy, up would spring Bardish Chagger with sort of similar talking points. Uh, she did a radio interview earlier this morning, Andrew, mm -hmm. uh, with our colleagues in Kitchener Waterloo. Um, interesting on the theme of, of ministerial accountability. Uh, she was asked straight up by our colleague Craig Norris whether she thought of resigning <laughs> over this, uh, given the scope of this controversy. And she sort of took umbrage to that, said no. She's working very hard on this file, thank you very much. But, uh, you know, interesting that no one has ultimately done more than apologize for this, right? We've seen apologies from the prime minister on down for what went wrong here, uh, but we haven't seen anyone say, you know what, I'm accountable and fall on their sword. Um, I think the opposition would love to see that. I don't know whether we will. It does seem mm -hmm. like the Liberals are, are ready to fight a strong offense, you know, getting out there, trying to talk to, you know, regional radio stations this morning and things like that, trying to move along from this, saying we've apologized, we've made a mistake, we're ready to go uh, and focus on other things. But I don't know whether, you know, with all the facts that are coming out and all the threads to pull on this, whether whether that will prove to be uh, something they can sustain in the coming days and weeks, Anna. Also interesting, uh, Janice, is that the Conservatives have tried to, the Conservatives made the point or argued uh, from their perspective that there are two camps, right, in the, in the Liberal uh, cabinet, right? The, as you mentioned, the barge poll people that they say uh, François-Philippe Champagne and then uh, the Deputy Prime Minister clearly on the, the side or supportive of, of uh, the Prime Minister and then uh, she she was asked a question and she didn't answer, he answered. What did you make uh, of that moment? I think the question was more or less what would it take for you to lose confidence in this, in the words of Andrew Scheer, this scandal-plagued Prime Minister? Yeah, and Christia Freeland has so far been uh, nothing but a good soldier uh, mm -hmm. for her boss, saying she has complete confidence, uh, apologizing, even though, you know, it's unclear how much she even had to do with this, but apologizing on behalf of the government for it anyway. And mm -hmm. she marched out and did a bunch of radio interviews this morning along those lines as well, uh, clearly trying to be part of the solution, trying to be part of the effort to help the government uh, move along from this. But uh, you know, is this real kind of pot stirring uh, uh, by the Conservatives going to work? Does it, uh, will it, will it surface divisions in the Liberal Party? Or when attacked, does the Liberal Party just kind of gather under the tent and, and, you know, unite as a team? I think we are going to see that in the coming days and weeks to come. It's one thing for an MP to sort of grumble privately about how frustrated they are about this thing you know, setting them back, it's another thing to sort of have any kind of open splits in this party. So we'll watch, we'll see, but minority governments, right, you have to really focus and work as a team or else things get very difficult very fast. So uh, yeah, something to watch, especially with poll mm -hmm. numbers not looking awesome, starting to slip a bit for this government. All right, Janice, thank you. The CBC's Janice McGregor live in Ottawa. You're watching CBC News Network. We're back in a moment.